Hello folks and welcome to the FM Retrospective where we look back at Football Manager 2016 and then get our crystal balls out and just the crystal balls, not not those kind of balls. We're clean here now and look into the future for what FM17 may have in store for us come whenever it's released. So, first of all, I need to introduce my guests. My guests? My guests! Oh, uh, we were just talking about sort of if you want to want to redo a, a balls up, and I've just done plenty myself. So this is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so so carry on the trend if you want, guys. But obviously, I have to introduce you first. So I don't know if it's to my left, to my right. I don't know. I've not made my mind up of where where we're going to put things on the screen yet. But uh, we have Der FM, Matthias. Hello. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. And I I know the time difference is ridiculous. We've already discussed that off off recording time. But uh, thank you very much. And to my right, I have a gentleman known as FM Samo. Um, but what is your real name, FM Samo? I am Chris. Hey. Hello, Chris. Hello. <laughs> How are you on this fine day? Yeah, very good, thank you. I, I'm I'm assuming we have sort of quite contrasting weather in our relevant locations or respective locations with <laughs> with Matthias being in America and uh, well I'm in England I'm not, Chris are you are you are you still native to Scotland yeah, or I'm in Scotland yep um, but I, it's been raining all day here so. ah well there you go so <laughs> excellent so why why not it's like it's like Scotland Scotland is like Manchester basically isn't it very much yeah yeah <laughs> excellent right we're going to jump straight into it, straight into this, and I, I'm going to start off by asking, what has been your most enjoyable save from Football Manager 2016? Now it can be one you've blogged, one you've played offline, one that you've played wherever. It doesn't matter, or if you've been played on mobile. Who know, who knows? Who cares? Well, I've, I obviously care. I've just asked, uh, but where have you been playing, and why did you enjoy that? And I think we'll start with Chris first. Yeah, so to be to be honest, I haven't had very many separate saves um, in, on Football Manager 16. Um, I, the team that I support um, is Greenock Morton. Um, we're a very, I would say, obscure Scottish team. Um, nobody really knows who we are, um, despite us playing in the same league last season as, as Rangers and Hibs. Um, so I uh, obviously went them as, as I support them um, and had a pretty, pretty epic save um, with them to be honest um, I blogged about it uh, and managed to get up until um, 2023 um, and won, won the Scottish Premiership a few times, uh, qualified for Europe and um, didn't get as far as, as dominating Europe whatsoever and um, I think I got to the second uh, knockout round of Europa League and that was probably the, the furthest I got in Europe. Um, but, but dominated Scotland um, and then actually moved to Spurs um, for a season from 23-24 season um, and, and went to Spurs and, and dominated as well. They'd just finished seventh um, in the Premiership before the, before the season before that. Um, and then um, I managed to, to win the league with them. Um, they qualified for the Europa League for through the fair play um European fair play system, and um, so I won the Europa League, um, and I won the FA Cup, um, as well. So that was a pretty successful save altogether, I would say. Um, but it's probably the best I'll ever do with Morton, um, on <laughs> on Phil Manager, on any Phil Manager. Um, it's best I've done, and I'm I'm tempted. Well, we'll probably go into it, but I'm tempted to knock with them on Phil Manager 2017 because I don't think I could top it. See, I, I'm I'm in a similar position where I mean, for years I used to always pick Blackburn because I've I've supported Blackburn for years, and that that would that without without fail that was my starting save, and for the past few versions I haven't, and this time I've come around to, uh, trying to replicate sort of something some the success I had with a save from Championship Manager 0102, so I fully get that 
bit. What what was the motive for moving to Spurs though? Did you get bored or was it just a a, diff- a change that you needed to to uh, move on? Yeah, I mean, I actually uh, did a poll um, just on one of the blogs, um, and the sort of the choice was to to move down south and see what was available, um, and try and uh, do something in Europe um, because I hadn't been able to do it at Morton and I didn't feel like I probably could. Um, it'd probably take another 10-ish years or so um, and obviously managed to do that in, in a season at Spurs which was pretty um, pretty awesome Excellent so moving on to Matthias yes. what has been your most enjoyable save and why? I would probably have to say my YouTube series with uh, Austria Vienna the Team Saga and the reason why is I've never done any management in Austria obviously it's a very small league uh, so I took over, you know, Austria Wien, who've kind of been on the decline for a few years, even though they're historically a powerhouse there. And I decided to do something totally different for me tactically. I went strikerless. So I played a tactical wow. setup that had no strikers at all and played really, really beautiful football. Um, you know, I, I completed three seasons uh, with them and won the league twice and the cup once. I won a title every year. And then in Europe, had a lot of heartbreak in in the Europa League once at the hands of Leicester and once at the hands of then eventual winners Atletico um, Madrid. So that was probably my most enjoyable one because it was just so different from what I'd usually done. Excellent. Well, I, I'm a one save wonder for Football Manager 2016, which is why I have to ask everyone else because I've just had the one save. So by default, that wins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know people like yourselves who, are, who find the time to play multiple saves or maybe I don't know what what's the thing that caused you to move on from something is it like a case of you've had a pre like predetermined goal that you've met or is it something like you just get bored and you you want a, a more of a challenge uh, well, with Austria Vienna, um, it was you know I could just see honestly in in the participation of, of viewers and subscribers and so on. It was kind of petering out. Um, plus, I'd had a just kind of a in, in my personal life kind of a, a change, new chapter in my life, and I figured you know let's do something new as a last last kind of save for for FM sixteen on YouTube. So, kind of moved on from there. I, I toyed with the idea of. Maybe changing the the Wunder team thing into kind of journeyman and move away from them and move to a bigger league, but I figured that would totally lose its charm, so I just kind of put it to bed for now. We've sort of assessed what was our most enjoyable saves. I wanted to know sort of what have you most enjoyed from FM 2016 and what have you least enjoyed, or sort of what features I suppose really have you found most useful or you know it doesn't have to be necessarily something that's been introduced for fm16 it, it can just be something that you know you've noticed or you've found yourself using and then perhaps like a match engine bug you know they do exist um if that's sort of been grinding your gears particularly um which i mean we'll start in well, well, we'll carry on if we go back to Chris. It's, it's a bit weird because cause we've only got three of us. We can't really have like a round table because we, well, they don't really make triangular tables, in all honesty. So we can, we can have <laughs> So, I mean, I, I, Chris, do you have any thoughts on, on either of those points right now? And then we can sort of expand from those and chime in as we go, I suppose, really. I've got a few points on what I'd like to see in FM17 in the future, but in terms of this game, FM, <coughs> excuse me, FM16, um, I don't know, I'm kind of a weird one, like I, I tend, like the new game comes out and I tend to just switch all of my focus from the last game to the new game and completely forget everything about the last game and just treat this game as the only FM there's ever been. Um, so I don't think there's not really much that I would like to moan about in terms of what's been in FM16 and what I've preferred more than other ones. I just just really enjoy when a new game comes out. 
Um, and I know people tend to say that SI just kind of, it's really a, pretty much like a data update every year now. Well, we'll, we'll touch on that later yeah, on. So I know, but... We'll um, pin, stick a pin in that one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, that, that's kind of how I feel, and I'm all right with that, to be honest. So, yeah. So, well, it, as... as um, Chris is sitting on the fence. Matthias, do you have any some anything sort of slightly more controversial? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, the stuff that I liked is I feel like it's becoming more tactically realistic and astute as a game because I love tactics. It's just one of the things I geek out on. Um, so, you know, you're able to actually... I think this is one of the first ones where you could really close to replicate a, a counter-pressing, gig-pressing type system. Because I know I tried it in FM14 and it totally sucked. Uh, I tried it in FM15 and it got better and I feel like an FM16 is getting pretty darn close. So I really, really enjoyed that. I, I also think the scouting is improving. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that. The stuff that I didn't enjoy, I think the same that anybody says, back post crosses. You know, I, was, I mean, I was, I was, I was <laughs> expecting someone to mention it. To be honest, <laughs> you know, I mean, having to put sometimes in some of my tactics, my center backs on both on cover just to somehow uh, go against back post crosses, which is completely unrealistic to have that many back post crosses. Uh, that just frustrated the heck out of me. Uh, that, but then I was equally surprised when it when it didn't happen. You know, a back post cross. I'm like, oh, here's a goal. And it's not, and it's, you're just completely flabbergasted. I was just going to say I've been absolutely fine with back post crosses because I have made the most of it. Uh, <laughs> so mean, Chris's games end like 8-6. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> wing, wing backs on attack is the way forward. That's, so, so full backs all have hat tricks. <laughs> yeah. My full backs are genuinely my best players every single season. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I had that with Vienna. I mean, I had my wingbacks. I didn't have wingers, and those guys would lump in each side 20 assists a season. Yep. Uh, even though it was predominantly a short, passing through the middle type tactic, it was unbelievable. And I think that does kind of reflect... I know some people say, oh, it's unrealistic that fullbacks are so powerful in the game, but it actually reflects modern football in a lot of aspects that fullbacks are becoming more and more and more important uh, whereas wingers are cutting more inside, so they're the guys for the width. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm going to pinch something from Cleon here because he he recently tweeted out or he, the, one of the articles he was finishing uh, was about his uh, Brazilian box formation that he'd been working on. And I remember him doing an article about this years ago, and it was the first thing that sort of made me aware of his content that he was he was building up. But even then, he was sort of going back to sort of a formation that was sort of, I suppose, popularised in the, the late 70s, early 80s. But, you know, Bra the Brazilian fullback is a, you know, it's a it's a modern football, uh, I suppose, archetype, really. And that now most formations, regardless of whether they use wingers or not, they will always use fullbacks. And which is why I think more frequently now you get, players being converted to fullback from other positions like central midfield or perhaps a winger reverting back because they're expected to do a lot more than just defend i mean you know you look look back in history and think about the 442 where you know fullbacks were basically auxiliary center halves and they would just be lumping it forward now they're so involved in in the build up play especially when you don't have a winger that they are, you know, they they're going to see the ball all the time because that's your only outlet, especially if you're playing narrow. So that's they're they're then going to be the only option you really have, unless you've got someone like in midfield, perhaps sitting slightly deeper. But they're the only ones offering you width to penetrate from. That wasn't a sexual joke. Just just making that clear. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we can now move on to the future and look into sort of Football Manager 17 or 2017 and what features we are kind of expecting to see or would like to see or perhaps how they're going to be improving on features that are existing within the game rather than sort of additional new features. Um, does anyone want to chime in on with anything there? 
Chris, you you were intimating that you had a list. <laughs> I do I do have a little list, yeah. Um, one of my main ones, and I'm just finding it more, uh, just as I've been playing over the last maybe month or so, is set pieces. Um, obviously, we've, we've seen a few people come out with a few set piece routines that have worked um, and that have been effective, but I just think it needs a bit of a look at again in terms of only being able to have one player or challenge the keeper or one player that's attacking from deep or one player that's sitting on the edge of the box. Um, I think it would be good to to have set pieces looked at again and, and a bit more variety um, be able to, to be available for us to use. I mean, I, I would agree with that and I would love to have a bit more flexibility, but I would imagine it's like it is because if you do anything else, like allow multiple players to sit in one position it will break the match engine basically yeah, and it probably. just becomes an exploit so although it's although it would be nice i can't see it happening unless there's sort of drastic changes to the to the ai that enable it to be be able to handle that sort of thing you're probably right there and they, they probably well they would have brought it in before now if it, if it didn't have that so i mean it'd be nice to obviously know if they were they were looking at it but we'll we'll never know until it gets announced as a new feature when we so um, I think it kind of makes sense, obviously, because you've got teams now bringing in like specialist set piece coaches and things like that. So, um, yeah. SI and Football Manager always say that they're trying to reflect the real game as much as possible. So, um, it'd be good to have that. It could well part. be something they've got in the bank, like that that will could come be, in. Yeah. A few others, because I know I, I mentioned it when I was recording with some of the other guys that. that Miles is, sort of frequently says that you know they've got features in the bank for you know, for days or years, really, and for multiple iterations and when things are likely to come in. So even when they're working now on FM17, they're probably working two games ahead in, you know, and they're thinking for FM19 right now, even though FM17 has not even been released. So it could well be something in the pipeline. It would be lovely if it, if it was to give that added depth. Definitely agree, yeah. Was there anything else on your list? Uh, I'm, I'm sure this will be one of Matthias's points as he's had a few saves that have gone on a few years but um, like management from the AI um, it's just when you when you do a save it's more than a couple of seasons long um, it's just that some of their team building and some of the decisions that they make in terms of transfers like, like I've seen at one point in my morning save I think Celtic had about 10 goalkeepers <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anything that extreme. But they just that's... kept they just kept signing goalkeepers and transfer windows, and I'm like, you already have like five. You don't need any more. Um, and yeah, AI management just just in general, to be honest, in terms of squad building and uh, signings and amounts that they offer your players, and then expect you to pay for theirs. Um, yeah, that's one of my bugbears. Matthias, have you seen similar things? I know I certainly have. Oh yeah, I mean, first of all, low ball offers oh, are that absolutely insane. I mean, it's like they're on a save that I have right now. I, I wanted to buy a player that's valued at five hundred k, and the minimum they'll accept is fifteen million. Yeah, I have a player that's valued <laughs> seven million, same age, better player, and the offer I get is like a couple million under his value, and from Bayern. And I go, what are you smoking? I mean, we just saw Pogba go for 120 million euros, you know, and, and you're lowballing me, but then you're extorting me on the other side. I, I'd say that's one of the, the biggest AI management gripes that I have. It's just the transfers at times are ridiculous. They basically all act like Daniel Levy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it can be very frustrating, I think. And I, I certainly agree with Chris's point about the squad building. Like, you, they, the thing I find that they'll they'll either extort something or lowball you with an offer. For example, Chelsea will sign your you know your lovely little regen who's just come through, but you can't afford to keep, and then they never play him. And uh, so you basically sell him and then buy him back later on. Yeah, that, that, you know, and that that happens so frequently that they buy players for extortionate amounts, and then they just rot in the reserves. It's almost as if they're buying them up so you can't play, you can't use them really. Definitely found that a few times as well. And um, sometimes it can obviously work in your favour when you get a really good player and cheap. Um, Absolutely, it's maybe been at your rival that they've signed. 
Um, but yeah. Okay, so Matthias, do you have any sort of new features or anything like that that you would like to see rather than in improvements? Um, well, one of them, like I said, I, I love tactics and I'm all about pressing systems. I would love for somehow to build in pressing triggers, you know, like they do in real life football. Say the center back plays it out to the fullback and that triggers everybody in an attacking sense to shift their position and press and cut down passing lanes. So something like that would be nice. I I don't know how you would build that into the match engine, uh, but it, it would be nice. And then the other thing that I think they can easily do is uh, on a scouting sense, because you can scout nations. I would love to be able to scout regions within nations. Um, so if, if you've got a, a, you know, if you're in England, just scouting Greater Manchester, you know, if you're a Manchester-based club. Um, or if you're in Scotland, the Highlands, you know, something along those lines where you can pick out certain regions within a country, especially if it's your own country, to try to take players off of other clubs and, and really focus in on a regional side versus then just a club. Because then you can gather, if you do like, I don't know, the, the Ruhrgebiet in Germany, you're basically scouting 15 different clubs within one region. I quite like that idea. I think they could maybe do some. They could bring in something like that with maybe youth scouting as well. So I was I was about to suggest yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it makes more sense because I mean, naturally, when you get your, your youth intake in March or whenever it is for that particular league, it tends to be from local clubs anyway. So there obviously seems to be some sort of coding uh, leaning towards that sort of uh, regionalization anyway. So I I can't see it being out of the realms of possibility to be honest yeah but other than that you know i know i've heard this a few times so um <laughs> our friend shrunaldo will probably want this make the inverted wing back actually do what the inverted <laughs> wing back is supposed to do <laughs> see i i i I, I'm playing sort of bingo with it, like in my own head of things that I'd sort of written down that like, I, I'll level with you guys to be honest. Like there, I there's stereotypes for each kind of creator, I suppose. So mm -hmm. the, the YouTube for you know the arena generally we're pretty useless at tactics and it's generally for entertainment. But when it comes to blogging, it's it's purely tactics based, and that is you know the focus of everything and I thought someone is going to have to mention it and I, and I was expecting one of you to, to bring it up because it's <laughs> I, I know it's one of his bugbears and it's been since they introduced the position that it, it just doesn't operate as it should if I'm and I'm still trying to figure and I'm still trying to figure out what a Raumdeuter really does <laughs> Yeah. Invade space, apparently <laughs> I mean, it's just another inside forward who runs less and, and sits narrower, I think. That that's yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so I don't know. But your your pronunciation is uh, incredible. Can you just say it once more? Raumdeuter. Raumdeuter. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> this, this, this oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> one of, it's one of the main reasons why I watch Matthias' YouTube videos. Because <laughs> <laughs> of his excellent German pronunciation. Yeah, definitely. Get your umlauts out for the lads. <laughs> Okay. I have one more. Just, okay. Just to Go squeeze on. it in. It's quite a random one. So um I obviously play in Scotland quite a lot and I was thinking that it'd be good to when you're in game or in a save, you can then try and restructure or edit something about the league while you're in a save. Um just to make it a bit more interesting because obviously you have like the Premiership in Scotland is just 12 teams and you're playing those 12 teams four times a season maybe and you play them twice in a cup and, uh, and you can have, like Matthias, you said, in Austria it's quite a small league as well and I think, as we mentioned, Trinaldo, I think he, he edited the, the Austrian system and added in a few more countries as well so people are obviously editing at before saves but then it'd be good to start off as the league is and then as you go on a few seasons potentially given the option to, to edit the, the structure of the database or the, the league system that you're in. It's a bit of a random one, but... I mean, well, the, the, this is quite interesting, actually, because it, it touches on two points that I was going to mention. Uh, the first one was like the playable leagues. 
Now, I came a bit unstuck with a few things because uh, during my save, I became Japan manager. And, um, yeah, I didn't have the league selected because, well, I, I wasn't playing in Japan. I didn't really need Japan loaded at the time. And so I... And because you can't... Well, the J Japan is, I suppose, a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a, a niche thing anyway because uh, they don't have the licensing so you can't have the league working as it would like if you were to add some uh, like another european nation that does but it meant that i couldn't i had to basically resign because i couldn't progress in the game because i didn't have enough goalkeepers <laughs> i only, the, the i think is the asia cup requires three goalkeepers and i only had two no in fact no I, not two i only had one and he was going to retire at the end of that season <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is with the playable leagues they only activate like you can you can select them but they only activate until the next they don't start until the next season so I think mm -hmm. it would be quite nice to maybe jump start that and maybe the next month or maybe even from the point where you start because especially when it's a bigger league you know the the, pr the Premier League for that particular nation the game keeps a track of that and obviously it, it builds the fixture backlog up because they have to par be participating um, in in you know as a view only sort of capacity I, I suppose, um, but it, that was a a real annoying thing for me is that if or if you wanted to start playing a league you kind of have to resign and then wait until it start gets to the start of that league if you did fancy to move to say Sweden or something like that if you is beyond to is sort of your I suppose both of your stance on on editing itself now whether it be for sort of personal enjoyment or as a creator to add more depth to something i mean where where do you where do you sit on it uh well i i don't even know how to use the editor <laughs> and i'm too cheap to pay for it um so yeah i mean it's not something that's ever really entered my mind um i'd rather just play them the game as is uh which is you know more realistic yeah there are certain players okay they should be better or others should be worse but i'll deal with what they have it's okay um if somebody else wants to edit you know that's their that's their choice just let people know uh if you're a content creator that is let people know if you're just doing it for yourself just go for it you know whatever whatever makes you have fun with the game is fine yeah definitely agree with that mm. I mean, just on maybe if you were if you were meaning towards um, editing before a game, then uh, I'm all for like downloading new databases and making changes to league systems and stuff like that. But yeah, completely agree with Matthias there. Yeah, they say that the 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 pre-game editor is is you know I would agree it's sort of not I'm going to say fair game, but it's um, you know it's fine because it doesn't really affect things and when I, if I'm looking for like a, a particular database that someone's built I will always make sure that the attributes have not been touched because I want my, like a, a vanilla experience as much as possible but say I want to play in like tier 400 in the English pyramid or, or something ridiculous like that I don't I know that all the players are pretty much going to have like no attributes they might as well be zero but I want them to be whatever they were going to be rather than uh, I, well, I suppose at that level it's kind of difficult because the players don't exist. But um, when you're sort of faffing with players that shouldn't be faffed with, um, I, I think it's a bit it's a bit naughty. And I, not it's not. I don't think it's just a case of like content creators as well. I, um, that is a separate issue entirely that has been discussed to death. I think. But um, in terms of like the leaderboards on Steam and things like that, that's a good you, point. If you go and edit all of the players' stats for your particular team with twenties, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna absolutely, and but you pick like the lowest ranked team in that particular division, and they just blitz everyone. I know mean, you may well drop a few games, but it's statistically, you know, very, very unlikely that you're gonna drop too many points because you are so much better than anyone. Even you could play like four, you know, four players. Up, you know, up both wings, and you can still comfortably win. Um, I would have thought, because you're just that much better than the opposition. It might be an interesting uh, experiment for someone to do, actually, like do a H formation or something like that, and see what see what actually happens. But I, you know, when it comes to things like that, 
I mean, I, the leaderboard never has never worked for me, so I can never even see where I come. Oh, and I, it does... I, don't, I don't think I've ever looked at the leaderboard. <laughs> yeah. Baseball just not be there. But someone, someone might be really precious over it, and then some, some, some scrote decides they're going to go and have have a bit of a faff with the editor, and you know, rinse too many leagues. It's just not cricket, is it? Really, but that's just my no. opinion. I agree, completely agree. To sort of get your guys' opinions on Sports Interactive's sort of long-term goal for Football Manager and where you potentially see it moving, whether it be the immediate future, so say the next five years or ten years, uh, and also the lack of competition that there is at the moment. Uh, you know, they don't have a sort of a, a notable rival really at the moment, and does that impact? what they do and, and what they change and what they improve year on year. Well, you say that, Matt, but I actually saw a tweet earlier that Championship Manager 17 is out. See, I saw the that, tweet as that, well, but it's on mobile. A that's a thing. It, it, but it's a mobile game know, rather just... than rather than a full PC release. Um, and I think they, I think, uh, well, it's, it's Square Enix now, but who, who, who used to be IDOS, um, that I mean, they they take breaks. I've, I've I don't know if you've actually looked at uh, what 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 it looks like really, but it, it just looks a bit rubbish. <laughs> so I should say lack of credible competition. <laughs> fair, fair. But, um, Matthias, do you want to take that one? Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, lack of competition leads to complacency. You know, I mean, the question that they have. Who do they see as their competition? I mean, obviously, EA stopped with their football manager game. Uh, you know, in Germany, uh, the the company that was doing Anstoß, which is basically the German version of what used to be Championship Manager, they stopped because of licensing stuff with with EA. You know, I mean, where's EA going to take FIFA? Are they going to go more in depth on certain things, or you know, does SI think they need to go more like FIFA? So that means actually dumb the game down a little bit more. And I think you're going to see, and you're seeing it already, two different versions of the game. The ultra detailed, and I think they're going to go more in depth there. And then they're going to have a more streamlined FIFA Ultimate Team like game. So that's really the two that'll that'll play out, in my opinion. And I apologize for my dog freaking out outside right now. <laughs> That's, I can't even hear it. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. At least you didn't, you know, you could have been really harsh and said, "Oh, that's just my wife talking" or something like that. But <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Don't touch that one. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, um, well, I think that's a really interesting point, actually, particularly that you've you've raised about EA and their placement in the market and how that potentially impacts SI. Uh, because Cause, I mean, I, they're still holding on to the German license. EA is just sitting on that and not giving it up. And even though they don't have a football manager game anymore. So uh, the question is, why? Is it just a big fat middle finger to Sega, essentially, and SI and, and, and all that? Or do they still plan on doing something with it? Do you think the question is, the the EA even see football manager and SI as their competitors? Like, I think it's a, I think there's such a huge, like juggernaut now, and SI are kind of like the small, sort of, like hipster, trendy, younger brother that, like less people like, but some people really like. Oh yeah, based on on revenue, no doubt. I mean, SI are nothing to them based on overall revenue. If you once you start throwing in things like Madden, yeah. I mean, it's suppose, I suppose it it depends whether they see them as direct competition or not, in terms of the the market they're going for. But FIFA is a lot more casual, uh, and whereas I'd say Football Manager tends to have a bit more of a a dedicated audience, but will rarely, you know, they're they're they they're probably very reliant on people that buy the game every year, than or rather than new people buying it. Definitely. I, I mean, we've had there's there's been a few discussions on on Twitter about this over the last wee while or so, hasn't there? Anyway, in terms of football manager seeing or SI, sorry, um, trying to retain the market and then 
trying to weigh up at the same time going after new people. Um, I think they're finding it, well, my, my impression of it is they're finding it very tricky at the moment. Um, they can't really make up their minds what one they want to do. It's a, it's a very, very thin line to, to step on, really, I think, because you'll, you'll alienate, e- well, it's easier to alienate what who you already have. Like, for example, you start messing around with, with tactics, and I suppose the biggest change we had in recent years was the change from uh, the sliders to the tactic creator, and obviously the tactic creator has now had a couple of iterations itself. But that was a, a real big shift in I wouldn't say in dumbing it down but it made it a lot more accessible to more people because what do sliders actually mean in terms of real football yeah I agree I think this is more realistic than the sliders were and I I personally enjoy it more I think when you're able to actually you know when there is that relativity there that you can say oh well I can see they've done that in that game and now I want to try doing that the same sort of thing in my game you can actually use that and use the terminology I think it helps with the immersement within the universe that your save is encapsulated within but yeah. the but then you've got uh, the other hand where <laughs> so you, we, you get in sort of more casual people by making it more relatable to, to real life football but then you know, do you turn off diehards by by changing things too much, dumbing too many things down, uh, and making it maybe too by in turn by making it realistic, you dumb it down sort of inadvertently, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and I, that's why I think they'll go the route of having essentially two separate types of games available. They're already going that route. Mm-hmm. And I think when the even despite, like I don't, I don't play as much as I used to. Um, and I talk about that all the time, but I don't want to dumb down um, my experience of the game. I still want it to be what it was before. So more of the same, but in, make it better, basically. Yeah, very <laughs> much. Excellent. Right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Before we go, I'm obviously going to let you plug your stuff. Uh, because that's only fair. So, uh, what do you have, Chris? That where can people get you, and what can they view? Um, I'm on Twitter at um, fm underscore sam, um, and I've a blog at occasionalfm.wordpress.com. Smashing. And Matthias, you you've got a cacophony of links to real <laughs> off, I'm sure. Uh, well, you can find me on Twitter as well. It's DF Manager, so D E R F Manager. Um, I've got a YouTube channel. Just search DFM, D E R F M, and then uh, my blog is DFM, so D E R F M dot WordPress dot com. Excellent, excellent. I didn't even take that long. I'll put all of the links in the description anyway, so people can click because you're all lazy, I'm sure. So, gentlemen, thank you very much once again. And everyone else, it's goodbye from me. Thanks for watching, folks.